but our astronauts have to make now and had to make back during during the Apollo days. Now, this is absolutely correct. That's the and that's the challenge that we've implemented in this year. Watching Rover Challenge year in year out. This is uh, my fourth year, but it's the 24th year of Rover Challenges. So you have to make these events more complicated. You've got to challenge the students because what they're doing in the school systems today is much more complicated in years past. I mean, just several years ago, you wouldn't think that high schools and even middle schools would have capability to get a, a 3D capabilities, 3D printing capabilities in the classroom. And so, uh, let alone the ability to use. Uh, carbon fiber or uh, aircraft high aluminum alloys or you know designing these rovers as we see team two from Greenfield Central High School begin from the start finish line going through the first course and so one of the as you mentioned one of the challenges we wanted to make this real world make it authentic something that reflects not only you know what the astronauts do on any kind of exploration mission and that's making decisions and this challenge actually kind of reflects back to the Apollo 14 mission right. uh, the fact that you've got uh, Shepard Rusa and Mitchell all on, you know, all visiting the moon, and it's uh, Mitchell and, and, and Shepard, the moon Mitchell and Alan Shepard. Yeah, right. So they had to make the decisions of what can you do during your mission to get back uh, to conserve energy, what resources do you need, and so I think it's uh, interesting to try to add that difficult component as we see Greenfield Central Hill. One of the teams that come, uh, they come here year in and year out. It's exciting to have them here. They've actually, uh, with their uniforms and with their designs, we always have them on our websites. And so they've been successful. Always glad to have them here. It was nice to talk to Cole. We had the chance to ask them some questions um, about some of the different things they do for education outreach, for example. And so they actually have a STEM night at their middle school. So here's the high school team. It takes some time to go down to the middle school and try to inspire and get some of those students interested in joining the rover team year in and year out. This is one of the reasons why Greenfield Central is to come here to NASA Marshall and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Absolutely. And it's always incredible because these are full-time high school students. They're taking the time to build a rover, to do engineering, and then on top of it, they're going out to inspire the next generation uh, to continue on the development of that Mars generation. You know, we've seen them. They're going under the, the Martian terrain right now, and uh, they did have to get off, but you know, every year, that seems to be some of the most difficult terrain these teams face year in and year out. Yeah, this team actually won uh, second place in the 2016 year for high school division. So... Uh, once again, they're experienced. They used to be here, and it's interesting as you talk to Cole. They've been here before, so they're developing their strategy, approaching the courts today. How do they? First team gets to run. Second team maybe changes their strategy based on the first team. How will they approach it again tomorrow? As I see them working their way around here, it looks like maybe a bypass of one of the obstacles. Yeah, that's what it looks like. They are coming up to the instrument deployment. Here we go, so, tackling one of those challenges. There's uh, several different. You know, in the years past and last year, this was another new element that we added to Rover Challenge to make it more, again, real world and authentic. Uh, the idea of it's not just roving on a course, an obstacle course. You're trying to do some kind of scientific experiments and observations. And, and these are uh, actual scientific observations. They actually are doing something. The um, Think about the spectrographic photography that they'll do or the, the solar cells that may be on this deployment right here. Well, I have to say, I think preparing for this and reading about this new competition. The one that has me most excited is taking the flag in the lunar crater. Uh, just from a cool standpoint, uh, you think about all the historic pictures, whether it's Buzz Aldrin or Neil Armstrong or, or Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt on the last of all the missions, and all those historic images, to be able to recreate that in some kind of sort, that, that has to be just an exciting moment for these teams. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the challenges we decided last year as we uh, get a chance to actually get a rover at the start finish line with our good friend and colleague Lori Meggs. Guys, yeah, this is a really special one. You know, half of the battle is just getting here, and no truer words have ever been spoken than from Escuela Petro Mercado, our friends from Puerto Rico, and with me is Rick Navarro. He is the director of Boeing Space Operations, and, and Rick, you guys have really made that effort to reach out and get some of these teams here. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Part of our mission is making sure that we sponsor all teams and that we provide the mentorship that shows how to build an engineering or STEM career, how to overcome obstacles, which is all about Puerto Rico right now, overcoming obstacles and still getting to this competition with the spirit of innovation that we need to make the space program successful. And you say uh, these folks probably one of the hardest hit areas by Hurricane Maria. Absolutely. Very hard hit. They're still recovering from everything. But yet in the middle of all that, it is that spirit of innovation and ingenuity that got him here. And we salute that, and we want to give him a chance to say hello back to their, 
uh, compatriots back in Puerto Rico and yeah. to their hometown specifically. Folks are folks are back home watching, so go ahead, I'll let you uh, talk to them. And okay. Quieren saludar a la gente de Macao y Puerto Rico en general? Quiero un saludito ahí a toda mi a la isla, a mi escuela, a mis amigos que me están apoyando, los quiero un montón y gracias, muchas gracias por el apoyo. Ok, está muy emocionada por este, por lo que va a hacer. Muy ansiosa. She's ready to go, she's very anxious, they're about to go. Ok, ¿cómo está tu preparación? ¿Qué tal hiciste en el cargo? Este, nos estuvimos preparando dos meses largo, dedicamos mucho tiempo y, no, oh, pues ahora va a darlo todo. Well, I'm sure all those months of preparation are going to pay off right now. Just by showing up here, you've overcome all obstacles. So we salute you, the spirit of innovation, and go. That's right, we wish them so much luck. What, what were they telling you, uh, for those of us who don't speak Spanish? They have spent months preparing their vehicle and practicing. And yet, they feel anxious to start. They want to do it now. They feel very ready. They do know they're representing a whole lot of people, but yet they're pretty cool about it. Well, you're pretty cool for all you've done, you and Boeing, helping some of these teams get here and, and really mentoring them. Uh, thank you, Rick. Good luck to our team here. Back to you, Chris.